Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I'm your host, Chris Arnold. Thanks for joining us today. Always, always grateful that you guys spend your time with us. So I've got something for you today. Um, I'm going to take you back if you're kind of catching up on this whole story. So of course, we launched radio, man, that's been over a year ago, been super successful. And everyone kept coming in and like nudging me, Chris, TV, TV, when, when are we going to see some TV? So I knew obviously that, you know, to give the tribe an opportunity to do that, I was going to need to connect with someone that had as much, you know, a background on radio. I've got 10 years as, you know, they were going to have on TV. I wanted to see somewhere around eight to 10 years. So I connected with Tony Javier and I said, Tony, man, uh, we got to take your experience, your model, what you're doing. Let's talk about showing this to the tribe because a lot of people out there right now that are tired of the text blasting, tired of the RV, uh, RVMing, uh, they're loving radio. Let's go on this TV route. So brought them on a little while back. And then I said, Tony, next time we'll sit down again. I want you to bring me someone that you sat down with, coached through this process and actually bring me some data on this TV thing. Let's see how it kind of matches up with radio. Let's you know, I love to learn. So I'm like, I'm watching this thing, excited to kind of see what's happening. And so here's what you're going to get today. I got Tony Javier back on himself. And then we got one of his students today, Dean Rogers, and we are going to break down his numbers. And I'll give you a little bit of a taste. We're talking 100 leads generated roughly in about the first six weeks. We're talking about several deals already in the pipeline closed. So you're about to hear this story. I'm excited to tell it to you. So Tony Javier, Dean Rogers, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for joining. What's up, Chris? Glad to be back, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, Glad to be back. So Dean, man, people are popping in. Dean Rogers, who's this guy? Where is he located out of? Man, give us a quick snapshot, even how long you've been in the game. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, my background is a little different than most. I uh, didn't start out jumping into real estate or have family that was in it. Um, I found it a, a little bit different of a way. So I've been in the business for about seven years now. And uh, before that, you know, I, I grew up a sports guy. I'm a total sports guy, uh, you know, excelled at, at football and basketball and all the different sports growing up. Well, I ended up cho choosing football and focusing on that. Um, and came out of high school. I, I got a little shout out for my Redwood Rangers. And Dude, he, he literally put on the football helmet on the podcast. I love it. That's a first. That's a first right there. I love yeah, it. baby. Redwood Rangers and Visalia shout out. Okay, so uh, from there, I went to play college at, at UC Davis and played tight end there. And then I actually went on to play for the San Diego Chargers. So amazing. Um, yeah, had a had a great time there. Was playing great. Felt great. And, you know, North Turner was a coach telling me, hey, you're going to have a long career. So I'm thinking, man, I made it. And, you know, this is this is exactly I'm living out my dream. Um, that same year, 2011, like concussions were all the story in ESPN. And, you know, lo and behold, I was starting to feel some of those symptoms of just beating my head in all time. Right. You can't really decide if you're going to feel it sooner than someone else. So the long story of that is despite feeling great and, you know, playing my best and, and making it, I decided to hang up my cleats and, you know, choose a longer life in, in theory, right. than beating my head in and, and uh, being brain dead at 50. So, so I, I mean, that's that just right here. I mean, let's, let's, let's uh, kind of dive into this a little bit. So you had to make a decision for the long-term play versus the short term. And I can't even imagine the amount of hours from junior high to high school to two a day practices to all the time and money you invested. Talk about having to make that decision, because I think there's something that we could all learn from you on this from a principal standpoint. It, it was definitely, I'd have to say one of the hardest decisions I've had to make in my life um, still to this day, probably, because imagine living your entire life to get to a certain point, you make it, and you decide to walk away. Walk away. I mean, Unbelievable. Believe me, it was everything I dreamed of and more. Like, it's incredible to be on the other side of the fence. Like, you, you're in the club. It's it's the A lifestyle. And, like, you're you're living out your dream and it, you feel so good about it. But from, from the neck down, it felt amazing. From the neck up, I was thinking, coming back from practice sometimes, I see my head thinking, dude, I, I don't know how this is going to work long term. 
And I just had to make the decision, which, which was hard, but the, the best thing that, that came of being in sports and a lot of other people, I'm sure you can, uh, you can identify is it taught me how to be dedicated and it taught, taught me how to have a work ethic and stay, stay in it and be persistent. And, you know, I'm, I'm super competitive and I compete with myself probably the most than anybody else. And and I'm always pushing and driving myself. So that's that's kind of where I got my work ethic, work ethic and uh, continue to kind of push the limits. I love I love your mindset there. Um, you know, taking that experience and saying, "Hey, I was able to take from this world, which is obviously in some ways different than the real estate, but definitely some overlap." But the fact that your interpretation of that story and walking away is, "Hey, it prepared me for the next phase." And and I'm curious for you, you know. Hanging up the cleats, I think we all see a lot of the athletes that we follow having, you know, difficulty retiring because there's a sense of a loss of identity, right? Like oh, if you work so hard, how did you, like, what was that moment when you're like, I'm going to hang this up and I'm going to choose real estate and I'm going to be okay with this. Talk to us a little bit about that process because that's amazing that you had the ability to fundamentally hang up an identity and choose a new one. Like most people can't do that, dude. You know that. 100%. And you know, you're not necessarily born an entrepreneur. I, I had, I grew up in a entrepreneur family. My, my dad started his own business. My mom worked with him and they created their business and, and a lifestyle for us. And so I saw that, that work ethic. And, and I think a lot of that's kind of, um, uh, it, you know, in, in my blood, but, uh, I had the decision to make, could I, could it just crush me by making that decision and just be completely depressed? Yeah. Which, which believe me, I, I mean, you kind of want to, cause it's like everything you want there and you're, you're the one walking away from it um, and choosing not to, to continue. But I just knew that I, I, I had no choice, right? I had to force my mind to know that, all right, I'm going to go attack the next thing. And I didn't look back. Like I didn't wait at all. It was just like weeks after where I, I found my next, um, I actually had an alumni from Davis sent an email out said he was looking to hire in San Francisco. And I took the job. I got hired sight unseen. He's like, Oh yeah, you just came from the chargers. Sure. I'll hire you just, just so we can talk about it, you know? And so I started working and then I, I got the taste of, you know, putting in the same effort and, and knowing that I should get results from it. But, but then I, I realized quickly that no matter how hard I worked in that new environment, I wasn't going to get the results that I wanted. So I, I went on Google uh, while I was living in San Francisco in a 424 square foot uh, oceanfront uh, apartment that was way too expensive and Googled how to get started in real estate and found Sean Terry's podcast. And I just became obsessed. And, and I found real estate because I, I grew up liking real estate. I, I'd watch Dean Graciosi's late night infomercials on yeah. TV. And I'd be up at two in the morning, just obsessed, thinking I need to buy that course. I never did it. Um, and uh, it just kind of, you know, stuck in my head. But when, when, I, um, when I Googled Sean Terry, started listening to his podcast, How to Get Started, and I just became obsessed. And from day one, it took me only three months to do my first deal. From the day, first day I decided I wanted to, to do real estate. And I just listened to it every second I could. And just followed everything that he said to do, and uh, and that's, the other a, that's how you got started. That's how that's how, how you got to do it. Transition, amazing. So if you're listening, I mean, I want to take a sec on that because my question is, if you're listening right now, what is it in your life that needs an ending? Um, we call these the principle here is you know necessary endings. There's things in our life just like a rose bush that need to be pruned, right? There's things in our life that we need to know. We got to let go of this in order to move on to this. And so I just ask you, you know, hearing that story from Dean, I think that just inspires us all. If that guy could let go of that because he had a value for himself and, and saw his future and was willing to grab onto that, I think it sheds a light on us personally on what is it that we're holding on to that we need to let go of in order to grab onto something better. And then I can't even imagine the gap in that of the fear, right? And you overcame that fear of doing that, Dean. So super inspirational, man. I appreciate you sharing that. So let, let's hop to this TV piece, right? Before TV, 
what were you doing for lead generation? How are you generating deals? Yeah, so I've, I've scaled the business up over the years. Uh, kind of the, the highlights of when I first started listening to Sean Terry, um, I started in direct mail. So I scrounged up a budget, spent it, got leads in, closed the deal and kept respending. So I started in direct mail and have continued all these years to, to do direct mail. Um, then I've added on other little pieces by, you know, having my website, which really gotten really no leads from. Um, then I've added on uh, cold calling. I've added on direct mail and, and social media, Facebook ads, and all of them starting to generate leads, getting some deals from them. But as we've all experienced, in, at least in my market in Central California, there's only so many people that fit the profile. Um, you said it at the top when you and I were talking, there's only so many leads you can get from a list, right? It's and true. So you've got to get off the list dependent piece and begin to do something that's a little bit more mass marketing. It sounds like that's what you kind of begin to think through in your own mind. Yeah, 100%, because there's only so many, so many people you can add to that list that have a certain amount of equity that could actually sell their house if they wanted to, right? Um, there's only so many people that have owned their house more than X amount of years. So you start building this profile. There's only so many people. So after you hit them so many times with direct mail, it, you start to get diminishing returns. And I, I've, I've been feeling that. And so thinking, how can I get higher quality leads? How can I, I get like these evergreen leads that are not being targeted by anybody else. Well, there's massive competition, right? Because not only is the list going to take you so far, when you do get a deal, didn't you find you had more competition because everyone was fighting over the same list? 100%. Yeah, there's always, hey, you know, are you talking to anybody else? Yes, I have 10 other postcards from other investors and you're the first person I'm calling, but I'm going to call the other ones, right? So um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a tough way to go about it in, in some cases. So as, as we got into TV, we really experienced a, a much yeah. different experience. And I love you breaking down your thinking. It's like, hey, this was what I was experiencing. I realized I need to do something different. Tony, I want to kick this over to you. This whole idea of you know lead channels that are list dependent, right? Let's call those out like cold calling, direct mail, uh, RVMing, text blasting, the one thing they have in common is list dependent. And then you have something that's TV that's not. What was your original reason for going TV on your side like eight, 10 years ago? Was it the same reason as Dean? Like, I don't want to be least, uh, list dependent or did something else like mentally pull you in that direction, Tony? Well, actually, it wasn't anything that, that I was looking for TV. I actually met another um, contractor in my market that was on TV. We were playing poker together. And I kind of had that celebrity like, oh, man, this guy's on TV, you know, sitting next to this guy. But he was just a normal guy. And he's like, hey, man, uh, you're doing real estate. I think that could do well on TV. He's like, I'm crushing it on TV. Um, and he told me his numbers at the time. And I can't even remember what the numbers were. He's doing like a couple million dollars a year just off these TV commercials. And uh, he's like, you need to hook up with my media guy. Uh, he's awesome. He's you know, one that got me started and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, so that's when he turned me on to him, called him probably the next day or the day after. And within about 30 days, he talked me through it. He, you know, negotiated the commercials for me. He helped me produce a commercial. I had no idea what I was doing with shooting a commercial. And uh, again, within 30 to 45 days, I had my commercial going and um, started getting results pretty much from day one. Yeah, you've not looked back. I mean, you've been doing TV as long as I've been doing radio. I love, though, it happened playing some poker. And I also love that in that moment, you witnessed that that guy had celebrity status because of TV. And we talk a lot about that with TV and radio, that you don't get that from the other marketing channels. So that's super cool to see how you came into that. And honestly, so, just one more thing I'll say, I'm glad I found it because, you know, direct mail doesn't work for me anymore. Um, we started texting last year and it's doing okay, but it's a lot of work. Uh, we've done cold calling that hasn't worked for us. Um, you know, bandit signs, you can only put so many out until, you know, yeah. you start getting in trouble for those. So, I mean, honestly, I don't know if I would really have near the business that I have now without TV, because all of those other lead sources are pretty much dried up for us. We still have some of them, but they're only trickling in, you know, leads here and there and deals here and there. Whereas TV is our main source and really... Uh, the thing that keeps our business running. Yeah. And if you're listening, so you know, both these guys are on the West coast. So the Cali game 
is definitely more competitive and tougher to get deals out in that market. So what I find in places like California is it's good to watch people because they have to get really creative. That's why a lot of good things come out of places like Phoenix and Miami and Dallas because they're highly competitive. You just can't do what everyone else is doing. So I want to kind of break down your experience, Dean, on the process, right? You decide to connect with Tony. You're like, all right, I'm going to go this TV route from a common sense standpoint. I don't want to be list dependent. You talk with Tony and then what's the process from there on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like difficult to set up. How hard was it to get your TV set up and going? Yeah, great question. So the the way I I got to TV was Tony and I are in a, a mastermind together that he runs And, you know, so I I learned about how Tony was doing TV and how it was working. He said, Hey, you know, would you be interested in TV? I'm thinking about, you know, opening up a program to this and and teaching others about it. So at first I was a little hesitant. Uh, Do I want to skeptical? Like you should be, we all should be skeptical (laughs) going. (laughs) Yeah. So do I want to spend more money on marketing? How expensive is it going to be? I've got to create TV commercials. You know, I, I'm comfortable being out front and open and in front of people and talking, but at the same time, it, it's still kind of pulling you outside of your comfort zone. You know, I've been on TV uh, a handful of times before, but still to do it, it's, it's kind of another thing to do. Uh, where am I going to go for the studio? You know, it seems like a lot, right? Well, Tony made it pretty clear after, you know, nudging me uh, a number of times, like, dude, come on, just check it out. Uh, he made it pretty clear that it was going to be simple and, from my experience, it was extremely simple, which is what made me so excited about it. He's, he has a media buyer who's going to go negotiate the rates for me. He's got a media buyer who's going to set up the commercial for me, edit it for me. I don't have to work. I, I like doing some of that editing stuff myself, but I don't want to be the one that makes the final decisions. I just want it to look like Tony's. Tony's looks good. Can I make it look like yeah, that? Just wanna, you want to plug and play, right? Yeah. Hey, what you're doing is working. Can I plug it into my business and not have to do a lot of work? Tony, I think you've kind of dubbed this a done with you system, right? You want to elaborate because someone's listening going, how much work is this going to take? I got a lot going on. I don't want to launch another marketing channel that just ends up being another job. You know, wh- why did you set it up this way as kind of a done with you system? Well, you know, a lot of marketing is backwards of TV. You know, the, the other marketing, you can set up a text campaign, you can buy a list, you can throw it into a campaign, and then it's easy to get going, right? But then as you do the deals, as you do the texting and cold calling and all that, there's so much to figure out. It's, you know, what list do we continue to buy? What, you know, who do we have operated? What kind of messages do we send? There's so much to it going forward, right? Whereas TV is the other way around. It's just a little bit of extra effort in the beginning to get it set up. But like Dean said, it's not nearly as hard as people would think. But now what, what do you spend, Dean? You spend no time on TV, right? You just handle the leads. Zero. Zero. And so it's That's- set and forget it. Would you say just like radio, it's set and forget it? Is that a fair assessment? Just pay your bill and answer the phone when it rings, Dean? Yeah. I mean, think about all the other different campaigns that you have. Direct mail. You're setting that up weekly or monthly. You have to go in. You have to cleanse your list and get it prepared. Give it to your fulfillment center. Texting, it's a it's a labor of love. You're in that thing every day, fixing, adjusting, changing, uh, cold calling. Uh, unless you're outsourcing it, it's still something you're manually doing. TV, you literally just shoot the original commercial and then you just let your phone ring. That's it. And then going back to your question, Chris, the done with you system, basically I wanted to make it as easy as possible for anybody who got in the program. So as you know, when you buy a program, like I bought Carlton Sheets down pay, no down payment system 20 years ago, I, I've met dozens of people that have bought that system and never used it. I think I've met one or two other people that have actually bought that system and used it. So I said, when I created this, I wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to get going. And that's actually why TV is so uh, under the radar and so not competitive is because people think it's a lot of work and it can be if you do it on your own. Like if you do it on your own, like figuring it out, what stations do I call? What shows am I on? What's my scripting? Like all of that would be a lot to do on your own. And so what we do is basically take our system, plug it into other people's markets to where all they have to do is go through the program. Uh, it's not very long, decide what scripts they want to use. If they want to shoot the commercial, they can shoot it. If not, I've shot the commercial for some of my students. Um, we've done just, you know, basic commercials with, you know, 
graphics and things like that. Uh, but we wanted to make it easy as possible. So we helped produce the commercial. We've got all of the statistics of what worked for our commercials, what didn't work, right? And then on the other side, Drew, uh, Dean mentioned the media buyer basically will go in and negotiate the rates for you, get better deal for you. He knows uh, what kind of language to, to use when, uh, when talking and negotiating to the stations. And he just presents it on a silver platter within about a week of signing up. He can say, hey, here's what has worked for Tony. Here's what I negotiated for you. Do you approve it or not? And then all of, you know, it's up to the, uh, you know, the student to shoot the commercial and go through that. So within honestly two to three weeks, we can have people, someone on the air up and running. Whereas if someone tried to figure it out on their own, it could take months if they if they ever even do it up themselves because it's so much work. It's a plug and play model, which I like. And I think a lot of people out there prefer, I know I do, if I'm paying to get something set up, I'm paying for speed and I'm paying for you know convenience uh, and efficiency. And so I like the way you've set it up, Tony, because it's pretty much a done with you system. So you know, do you not want to go over to what really matters in my mind? And that's data, right? Uh, I make my decisions based on data. Um, so we can talk about all the frilly things around TV, et cetera, but let's get down into your numbers, right? So you've been live now, right, for six weeks and we want to bring you in like, you know, how fast is this kick kickoff? What can this potentially do, right? And again, if you're listening, you know, we're giving you kind of a generalized idea. Uh, there's obviously outlying situations, but here is one example of what can happen out in Cali within the first six weeks, right? So what's your ad spend right now? How much are you spending per month on uh, TV? Yeah, so it's approximately 5,500 bucks if you average it out. Um, and that's, as I mentioned, two, two markets side by side next to each other. Okay. And then I love this because when I started asking you questions, you're like, I got my RA Simply up and you just started giving me the data. Because again, yeah. RA Simply tracks all this for you. We keep telling you guys, know your metrics, use a system that will do it. So how many leads would you say you've generated in the first six weeks? Yeah, so first six weeks, I've got 73 leads directly calling uh, the number that I have set up for TV okay. and another 21 through my website, which I haven't been getting any leads through my website prior. So, I mean, if you, and I know they're going direct to it, from watching a commercial because our website's on there. So putting those together, we've got 90, 94 leads out of that. 94 leads. So, I mean, that's just really strong. And it's interesting. A lot of people ask about TV, you know, even radio, like how long does it take for the lead volume to come in? Um, and one of the reasons I'm really excited to be working with Tony on this is because we see a lot of similarities. And so this is not like cold call where you got to wait six months, right? Or three to six, I'll say three to six months. Um, I hear kind of that span to, you know, for all that follow-up to kind of come into place. Uh, and cold calling absolutely works. It's just a comparison to something like TV where you go live, you're hitting an audience immediately and those calls are coming in. And like you're seeing with Dean, you know, right around 90 in the first six weeks. So how many offers um, have you put out on deals in the first six weeks? Yeah, total offers we put uh, 18 offers on. Okay. And you have three under contract and one closed. So let's go to the three under contract that are pending. Let's talk about that pipeline. What do you got there numerically? And I think one, you're actually going to turn into a rental. Yeah. So um, the, the one that we've closed already uh, came from TV, you know, great lead, been, been vacant for years, you know, you'd have to assume it's on one of our lists that we've been direct mailing and cold calling, but sure enough, TV, they wanted to call us right away. Uh, great conversation. Uh, flash forward that deal closed. We made $35,000 off our first. Dude, that's TV. strong. 35 K off your first TV deal. You're spending 5,500. So we can roughly say that that's pretty much paid for your radio, uh, for your TV for the next six months. Got free TV for the next six months. Six months. That's <laughs> phenomenal. So anything you do on top of that is just yeah. absolute in your pocket net. Okay. 35, Tony, you gotta be excited hearing these numbers, right? Cause you're like, dude, I, I know this works. I know this works. And then on the three that you have pending, walk us through those numbers. What do you got there? Yeah. So uh, one that we literally just got yesterday and sold it to an investor by texting just one person got it sold in two minutes. Uh, we're going to make $15,000 off of that one. Um, 
And then we've got another one that we could wholesale it and make 20 to $25,000. I mean, just probably one or two text messages, uh, but we'll probably keep it as a rental. The numbers are really good on it. Um, and then the, the last one, we've got it assigned. We're going to make 5,000 on it. Just a, a little small deal. Okay. So if I add that up roughly, what you're looking at there is roughly around, let's say 70, I'm going to be conservative. We'll say around 75,000 that you've generated in revenue within the first six weeks if you're moving all of those deals. How, how do you feel about that in comparison to some of the other stuff? Because again, you've been in the game for a while. So what do you think about these results? I'm super excited about it because again, it, it was the plug and play. I know the phone's going to just keep ringing. I know those leads are going to generally be higher quality. I'm not having to fuss around with it. And just the thought of when we're on those phone calls, we're, we're the authority. Um, it's got the celebrity factor to it that we've talked about. And, um, you know, they're, it's, it's going to be something that should be able to continue to repeat and bring leads that we're not having to work so hard to find. Yeah, absolutely. So here's what I hear you're liking about it, which is my next question. It's a great high quality lead. That's one that you like. Number two, you're getting that celebrity status. And number three, for what you've produced income-wise, the amount of work that you've had to put in is pretty reasonable in comparison to something that's much more of a high-maintenance marketing channel. Would you say those are your top three things wow. you love the most, what you've seen so far? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, those are great. I mean, those are all to be excited about. So if somebody's listening, right, and they're like, should I do this TV thing? Because I, I, and here's what I know right now. This is a reason, Tony, I wanted to have you on and Dean. Our responsibility, you know, via this podcast is to make sure that we're presenting everyone with options out there on what they can do and different personalities fit different marketing channels. But I know that there's a lot of people right now that are pretty burnt out on the text blasting and the RVMing and so forth. They just are. And they're looking for something different. And so it's our responsibility to kind of bring in uh, cutting edge stuff. And again, TV is not cutting edge in the sense of how long it's existed, but the application of TV to real estate, you just don't see many people doing. There's virtually no competition, just like radio. But if somebody's maybe kind of listening, Dean, they're like, man, should I maybe consider this? Like, what would you tell them to maybe be thinking about? Because they're like, you know what, maybe I do want to do this, but you know, I'm still not quite sure yet. Yeah, I think, I think the more you're, the longer you're in the business, you just try to figure out how much effort you're putting into a certain marketing channel and what's the, the output from it. Some people, maybe they love the, the grind and hustle. Maybe they like driving the neighborhoods and they're going to get the best deals from that. But personally, um, I prefer to spend the money on a high quality lead. I can sit at my house without having to, you know, run out and drive in my car all day looking for stuff. And get a lead come right to me. I was at the, okay. So the first deal we closed and we made 35,000, I was at the park with my kids. Okay. My kids are out there playing at the park. Uh, call comes in. I kind of step back. I'm on the field and I have a 40 minute conversation with this lady. You know, during that time, the kids ran up and, you know, they're crying because they didn't get the snack they wanted or whatever. And, you know, use that as part of building that rapport. Like I'm a real person. I have kids and we talked about our kids and really connected on a personal level. And, I, but I was at the park with my kids. That's the, the main thing. I wasn't in the car away from my family, not being able to, to spend time with them, but had a high quality lead come in, took it and we got the deal done. I love it. <laughs> I love that you're just out there at the park and close the deal. Dude, I'm like you, Dean, again, there's prospecting and there's marketing, right? They both work, they're both effective, but on prospecting, you're spending time and you're spending energy. On marketing, you're spending dollars. On prospecting, it is outbound. On marketing, it's inbound. And I'm like you, Dean, I'm at a place where I value my time, I value my life, my relationships. If I can just pay and make the phone ring with a great opportunity, I'll play that game all day long, just from a preference standpoint. And so exactly. that's why I always the majority of the deals I do come from marketing, not prospecting. And that's my stop. And I'm not saying, I'm not telling you if you're listening that that's the way to go. Dean and I are just saying, and Tony, I know is nodding his head 
saying the same thing. This is just the way we prefer to do business because we're lifestyle guys. We want to build a lifestyle that supports us. So Tony, somebody's listening. They're like, okay, I, I, I like this. I can get on board with this. Where do I start? You know, I want to do my due diligence. I've got questions. Uh, I want to make sure I'm making a good decision. Where do they go? How, how do they find you? What's that look like? Yeah. So, uh, we've got a program that, you know, we put it all together for you and make it super simple, just like Dean went through. In fact, when Dean went through the program, we were just launching it. Um, we've put some, some additional touches on it and we've got some additional data. We've got, uh, investors around the country that are having success like Dean. We're getting data every single day. So not only do you get access to me and my program and my media buyer, but also you get to connect with all of the other uh, students are in the program getting results and, you know, sharing data and all that good stuff. So, uh, so we have a program set up. Um, if you want to go, we've got, uh, we treat uh, Wholesale Inc. podcast, um, uh, people just as specialty, not even more special than, uh, than, than the other uh, people we bring in. So we set up a link for you, realestatemasterstv.com backslash Chris. Um, you can go there and apply. We do have only so many spots uh, throughout the U.S. and we only have so many spots per market. Uh, so it is filling up pretty quickly in a lot of different markets. So if you guys want to uh, uh, check in, in, you know, see if you're a good fit for uh, the program, we do want to make sure that we set you up for success and you are good for the program. So again, realestatemasterstv.com backslash Chris, go there and we'll take good care of you. I love it, man. So if you're listening, I mean, we're presenting, you know, just auctions for you guys for 2021. The game's changed a bit. It really has. You know, I've been doing this for 15 years. And so I have people ask me the thing that I've really become more and more of a believer in is mass media. Um, so whether that's, you know, television, whether that's radio, things that create a platform that make you a celebrity, that create that high quality lead, give you that lifestyle. That's just for me, the direction that I will continue to put my marketing dollars in. And, and I think if you listen, TV is another viable option for you to consider. So, well, Dean, thanks so much, bro. Thanks for sharing your story. The first part of the podcast was just amazing. So thanks for uh, just inspiring us on what it means to, you know, make a tough decision uh, and to choose something uh, even when it's hard. And Tony, as always, thanks for offering up this program. Um, I know I've got a lot of people thanking me for radio and I know you're starting to get high fives for TV because it's super cool to give somebody a marketing channel that just changes the business. I mean, you and I have been doing this a long time. What's more exciting than doing deals is helping other people do deals. Uh, we've done enough transactions in our lives. So absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. We love it. So to the rest of you guys, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. Until next time, we will catch you soon when we add more value. Talk to you later.